Yo, what's happening? Dave Acton back with another episode of Larynx Limelight, where we take the opportunity to talk to MCs up and down the country of Wales, talk to them about their origins, their inspirations, their intentions for the year, for the years forthcoming, whatever it is. We sit down, we have a chat with them, we chop it up. Uh, yeah, we'll get straight into it because I'm really eager to talk to the guest that we've got today because I think he's an absolute animal. Researching <laughs> him was like mad. Um, one of the most versatile because he'll talk some really inspiring stuff uh, across a boom bap beat. He'll be really enlightening and he'll just as quickly give you some shellings on a 140. I've got man like Eaton with me. How's it going, bro? Up, up, up. Big up, bro. That was a sick intro, man. Got me feeling myself sat here, bro. <laughs> no, big up, bro. Respect, man. It's good to be involved, bro. And uh, feelings mutual, mate. It's good to see what you're doing and uh, the constant work rate and stuff. So it's only right we sit down and have a little chin wag, man. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's mad because obviously when we um, when we get to know about an artist, we give an, a sort of initial run on the artist, uh, sort of listening into what they've put out and what have you. And then okay. when we get round to things like this, we do like a deep dive on like okay. what, on what they've done. And mm -hmm. deep diving on you, pause, was yeah. like ridiculous <laughs> because there's so yeah. much content from like yeah. years back and whatnot. And like yeah. you've been you've been doing this since you were young. From from yeah, some stuff yeah. that I've seen, you've been doing it since you were young. Yeah, 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 mate. When I had about five, six chins. <laughs> I, I, I we're gonna bring that up, mate. I we're gonna. Mate, bring you have to, up. man. You have to. I'm not. I'm. Not. <laughs> Certain people have said to me, "Is it the same person?" Because I literally, I've just looked like a different person. Eh? But again, yeah, bro. It's um, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, mate. A lot's the happened in that. The time. talent's there, though, mate. From the footage mm. I've seen, from what I've watched, yeah. you've always had this in your bag. Like yeah. I say, um, you extremely versatile in what you put out at, like the projects that you've put out and then on cam, like giving someone a shell, like clashing against some artists and whatnot. Like it's yeah. ridiculous how versatile you are. No, as that's love, bro, man. Like it means a lot for me to even hear that, bro, man. So much every time, like somebody like yourself says that to me, bro. And like, I rate you so much that to hear that back and you think so much about the back catalog. Cause it's a tricky one with me, bro. Cause it's, it's there, but unless you die for it, it's not necessarily seen by a lot of people, if that makes sense. So even though it's been there for all that time, I still feel like it could surface now and be appreciated still now. Do you get me, if that makes sense? Definitely. And I think that's something that we missed giving you in that sense. Like You definitely deserve your flowers. Um, looking through some of the previous projects that you've got on, yeah. on like your band camp page, you know, you've got, I have got notes up here. Cause, okay, know, that's cool, bro. No, I appreciate that, bro, because it gives um, me stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, well, 2014, you had like two yeah. projects out in the space of like a month. Like, yeah. that work rate's like ridiculous. And then yeah. I've always been constantly sort of there, but I don't think that the appreciation has been there um, yeah. in, in a sense. But you, like yeah. I say, you've been on like multiple people's uh, other tracks, featured tracks and whatnot. You've been yeah. on multiple platforms, bigger platforms. You were on Fire and Street, JDZ Media, multiple times, Storytellers, yeah. all that. And I want mm -hmm. to go back to the beginnings of it. Um, yeah. Where did it all start for you? Where did the affinity for this art form begin with you? So are we going, we're going back as far as like let's, let's before go back the first on. lyric. Before let's the first lyric. Back. Yeah, let's Mate, do I'll, I'll be honest with you, I wish... I wish I could sit here and I'd have this fantastical, magical story for you about how it all started. But if I'm being completely honest with you, it was, I went to a high school, a high school in Newport called Bettis High School. It wasn't the greatest of comprehensive schools. It was known for being quite notoriously bad for education. The scores was not very good. Raddy, raddy, radda. So for me, bro, it was literally, it was a release because I, I, I used to meet people in school to rap more than I went to school to do school if that makes sense. It was like, I would only go there, not because I wanted to go to the school, I hated the school, but because there was a lot of people there that was into music. So instead of going to lessons, there was a small woods close to where the school was. And at lunchtime and break time, we would all kind of chip off out to these woods and whatnot. And we would just class each other and it would be random people. People weren't even MCs. It would be like my mate Carl that on weekends he goes and plays table tennis with his dad but when it's school time he's got 64 bars on lunchtime do you know what I mean he's just about that life do you know what I mean so it was just a hobby mate and 
we, we kept doing it so much and so much that in the end, there ended up being a selection of us that kind of were known for doing this rap type of stuff within school. And um, for me, bro, it was just a joke. It was just a laugh. Like, I think probably a lot of people started the same way, man. They didn't have the intentions of being a rapper or a musician. It was more of just for a joke and a laugh. And that was basically it, mate. I think it, and then it kept progressing. And then people started saying, oh, when you're going to do more raps. And then the gatherings over the woods would increase. And then, do you know what I mean? And that was basically it, bro. I used my first ever rap name. And I don't even know if a lot of people know this, but I used to call myself Lyrical E. That was my literally my first ever thing. So for the first couple of years, I was lyrical E. And then I thought, now nah, scrap this. I'm just going to use my surname because then I haven't got to give people some bogus explanation as to why I got this amazing rap name. So now when people say Eaton, well, it's, well, it's my surname. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. It's done. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. basically it, bro. <laughs> just because of a laugh and a joke, man. Yeah, it's sick. Simple, done and dusted with Eaton as yeah. well. I love it. I love it. Um, mm-hmm. So with that sort of core group of people that sort of, you know, met up and did this as a laugh, Mm-hmm. which is interesting to hear from my perspective because like I think where I'm from we're obviously based in Wrexham we we were always met with skepticism we're still met with skepticism now oh, yeah. you want to be a rapper you want to be a rapper what's all that about sort of thing was there still that sort of skepticism outside of that core group or was it welcomed in any way oh no yeah 100% you were seen as you were seen as opposite end of the scale, yeah, because you were choosing to do something in, in that category. Yeah, 100%, mate. Like, any times there'd be, say, for instance, there'd be a bit of a commotion where there'd be a rap battle between two of the MCs, which were causing a bit of a scene, so that they people would congregate and instantly it'd be seen by everybody else as, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? So, yeah, it was never seen, it was never seen greatly, bro, to be honest. But I think me, I, when somebody tells me not to do something, it makes me want to do something more. So I think that's rooted from all them years back then, all them times then people were like, nah, you ain't going to be a rapper, you ain't going to do this. Then that just pushes people to kind of do it more and it makes it stick, you know, and it becomes a day-to-day thing because you kind of want to prove all of them people wrong in a sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Just touching on this thing, because um, Liam is your brother, correct? Correct, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, Liam is obviously musically gifted too. He's so, gonna be gassed. He's gonna be gassed that you mentioned him, bro. Honestly, man, you will. You will be gassed. Yeah, but go so, on, bro. Sorry to interrupt it's you. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Um, so yeah, Liam is obviously musically gifted as well. Um, mm-hmm. so where, how did he? Uh, it's probably a conversation I should have with him. But with, with you two both being yeah. musically, is there any sort of music in the family, or was it uh, you two the pioneers of it in a sense? Mate, my uncle was uh, a blues jazz musician. And that's the only that's the only person in my whole bloodline, as far as I know, that's ever had anything to do with music, mate. So no, it, short answer to that question is no. It's me and my little brother, which makes me so happy, bro. Because before he was doing anything, it was just me. Yeah. So it's, it's only a good thing. That is too. I mean, it's fifty percent more than what we started with. So yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, happy. definitely. Mm. Um, so obviously moving past school and obviously being in Newport and what have you, yeah. we have to touch on the talent pool that there is yeah. in Newport. And you've mm-hmm. worked with quite a few of the people that are involved in that scene and what what have you. How did you um, integrate into that scene? How, how did you go from sort of like school into into working with some of these other artists? Um, so I think the, the moment that I can remember being probably the breaking point for me was, I think, after the first couple of years of starting with all my mates and stuff, it got to a point where I would share um, the odd video. I think it was Facebook. I'm sure it was probably still Facebook. I'm not sure it might've been another platform at the time, but I remember sharing a um, freestyle video in my bedroom. I think I called it like fire in the room or something silly like that on my Facebook and Gavin Fernquest um, saw the link. Now at this point, I didn't know any of them at all. It was just my friends that I knew locally um and my music that was as far as my music went it was just between us and I remember putting the video away and um Gavin seeing it and for me bro that was kind of a moment where I thought okay I knew what Gavin was doing at the time because obviously he'd had all the car park videos that were circulating outside of the leisure center in Newport and for me bro God's honest truth that was the boost and I say this to him to this day if you hadn't mentioned on that um status all them years ago about me doing that freestyle. I probably wouldn't have connected with you guys. I wouldn't have connected with um, Caleb, Yagster, the old project, the No Politics project, which I'm not, are you you aware of that project that we all did together? 
that the, wasn't one that I came across. It wasn't. It's, it's not on my... It, it was just a joint project that me, FernQuest, Alicia Scott, Super Darkus, um, DJ Tension, we're going back a long time, a long, long time, <laughs> to the point where they wouldn't be happy sharing the tunes now, but we did a 22-track project, and that, that basically brought me into... Um, the interaction and the connections with all of the Newport MCs in a way, bro, just from being in that circuit back then. Other than sort of the artists that are there in Newport, what's the scene like itself? Like what, what are like the, the gig opportunities? Is anyone looking other than the, other than the artists? Is anyone looking to put shows on or anything like that? No, in, in this climate, no. Not not at this not in this climate, but of course. When but... it was when it was active. When yeah. it was active. I, I wanna say I wanna say no, but I also feel like I'm not educated enough on the live venue scene in Newport. I know there's a few places that are trying. I know um Le Pub is a Newport venue, I think. I'm right in saying and obviously there's a few other places, but I don't hear of much, mate, if I'm being honest with you. It seems to be a lot more Cardiff based. Um, for the venues and for the live music than it does in Newport. I don't necessarily know why. We haven't got the most amount of venues either, which is probably another thing. But no, mate, it's, it could be a lot better. And I think it's got a lot of potential to be better. It's just not at the moment. Do you, do you think, again, going back to sort of the scepticism side of things, do you think there's a scepticism because it's hip hop and because it's grime? Yeah. Maybe why yeah. promoters don't put on these yeah. types of gigs? Thousand percent. I think Newport as well has always been mainly known for more indie and bands. Along, you had GLC. Obviously, they did their thing. But let's be honest, they were more on the comedic side of things, weren't they? You know, it wasn't. It was hip hop. It was rap, and they're they're wicked. Always be respected. Amazing people. But there's never really been a serious hip hop act from this city. I don't think. Anyway, I could be wrong. Again, I, I don't want to say that that's a fact when it's not. But I'm pretty sure there isn't really. Anybody that's ever been a massive hip hop, rap, grime artist from this way at all, bro, ever? Uh, yeah, I think you'll find that across most parts of the country. In, yeah. uh, you know, there, there are genres that are preferred. Like, again, touching on here, uh, Wrexham has always been the, it, it was always the indie scene. Um, yeah. and, uh, the venues wouldn't necessarily, I mean, we've got our history up here, but no one ever sort of branched out like that. So, yeah, I think we definitely share that with a lot of other places in Wales as well. Um, and like I say, Cardiff has always had a, a, a you know, a music scene that sort of yeah. seems to welcome everything, which is great. Which is great. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. I was just about to say that, mate. I think the fact that we have that is just the, a, such a big step in the right direction anyway, because if we didn't have that hub of Cardiff, it'd be, I wouldn't say so much worse, but it would be a lot hard, harder for everybody to connect in that way, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, so once you get sort of integrated in, it, it, you know, and knowing the artists that are in Newport, you've obviously got um, a lot of your own music, like we've said, that um, we've yeah. uh, we've come across online and we've listened to and we've gone, bloody hell, like, why is this person, why is this artist not talked about in the highest of esteem? Because I think it's definitely due. <laughs> um, let's touch upon those projects a little bit, because like we yeah. say, you dropped two projects in 2014 in quick succession. Was, yeah. that, was that just the course of um, making tune after tune after tune, yeah. like one after another during that time period, or was it a collection of tracks over no, a couple of years, maybe? Well, I was hungry, hungry, so hungry. We all was. Everybody back then had... It was just everybody wanted to have stuff stacked up. And um, I always wanted to be the guy for projects. I always wanted, even if I, I said to myself, even if I look back in years to come and the projects are not necessarily as iron dated, as kind of fantastic as what I would have liked them to be. And I do feel that way, bro. There's, I listen to them projects now and I do think um, they could have been a lot better. But I'm guessing that obviously most musicians probably do the same way. They look back at their old stuff and they think this could have been changed, that could have changed. But I'm just happy at the fact that I've got, a couple of projects that were from that era so for me it's like when you look back on a photograph of it all the time it gives you that memory of like where you was in that moment for me even now when I listen back to those albums even though they're not necessarily um what I feel that I can give now to the table um for me they give me memories more than anything and I think just for that reason alone I can't ever ever get rid of them or ever kind of discredit them any further because at the end of the day, they're, they're my memories. You know what I mean? They're like my photos of those times. And um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Crazy. 
uh, and then you followed that up again with Escape the Comfort Zone in 2016. Yeah. And then yeah. we've not, like I say, you've always been sort of there in the picture because uh, the yeah. amount of like freestyle sessions, the amount of videos that are on your your channel on the street with each, just quickly shove that in there. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, all, all, all those videos and whatnot, you've always been a presence. But yeah. why was there a sort of tail off in the project side of things after the 2016 release? Or why have we not had more from yeah. Um, so short sto long story short so I not I went up to do um, the last thing that they probably would have you would have seen of me before that gap would have been um, the BBC three inspire project that I did with the other artists I, have you have you seen that that video I, I've seen a clip I think yeah uh, yeah I so basically so when we was doing that video it was me um, burner from London C Kane shogun from scotland uh, a singer called olivia louise tremendous lady from birmingham and another singer called alika and basically i was asked to be part of a short um video that was going to be shown on bbc3 um so i got asked to go up to london to do uh, a shoot for a couple of days for this track so basically anyway what i'm getting to is we did the track and um it went out um and it was a, it was one of those things where I'm on the train to London. I'm going up to meet all these big artists. It was for Idris Elba's takeover week. It was Jamal Edwards asking me to go up. So at this point, I'm on this train, bro. I'm sat there like like I've made it. Like yeah, this is me. You know what I mean? Because you do you when you get an opportunity this big like that, you think to yourself, okay, I'm on the right track. So I went up there. I did the project. Everything was great. Went amazing. Good few days meeting good people. Came back project came out and the response from it bro was okay it was it was decent but because I had my head in this estimate um, in this point of where I was certain that it was going to do so great when it didn't necessarily do as well or nowhere near as well as what I was expecting it to do it hit me quite hard so I'll be honest bro that that is literally the, the reason I was so quiet because of that one opportunity it put me in a place where I was thinking to myself right so I've come from sat in a studio with such and such names, people that I never thought I'd be sat in a studio with before. And then two days later, I'm getting asked to do something for, let's say, I don't know, uh, a channel that is local, for instance. And it was like, I didn't, it wasn't that I didn't want to do the freestyle for the channel. It was just a realization of, I wanted to keep progressing and keep moving up and I put in that work and I thought, right now, this opportunity is going to be something that's going to set me where I'm going to move. I'm going to be doing this. I just got depressed. I got depressed. I wasn't happy anymore. I thought to myself, well, I had that opportunity. And if, if I can't get anywhere after that opportunity, then what's the point in me carrying on? And then I took that gap and it was the only reason I've come back to music, bro, is purely because it's a release and without it, I was slipping into my old habits and my old ways of things that I was releasing through music. So as soon as I started doing this again for the love and forgetting about all those things and not necessarily worrying about the opportunities and the next step, it's just come back to me again. The music's there um, and I'm just creating like I used to. But yeah, I said I said it was going to be a short story, mate. It ended up being a long story. <laughs> long story. But it's, I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked me because I was hoping you would because it gives me it gives me reason to kind of explain a little bit why nothing major i just needed some time to be me and get myself back on track yeah well, we all need that we all need that and i think more so as as men talking about that and getting that off our chests yeah 100% um, it is definitely needed um speaking yeah. of obviously throughout your content uh, when it, and throughout your performances the subject matter has always been something that, like I found enlightening and inspiring. Um, what leads you to that side of things, like with your content, or why is that your your go to when it comes to content? Um, yeah, why are you talking, yeah. you know, about inspiring stuff and you know getting your grind on? And I, I think the, the best example, um, no favors, like yeah. it, a tremendous song, a tremendous song, yeah. and um, definitely. Um, is one that could be used to help in yeah. certain scenarios. Um, yeah. So why, why is it? Why is that the subject matter? Why is why is that something you want to talk about? For for me, I think is um, I would never ever try and portray 
something through my music that I'm not. So when my friends were first listening to my music, I in my early, early music, I'd get comments off my close friends like, why, why are you talking like that? We know you, we sit with you every single day. You're not about that life. So you can fool people that don't know you. And a lot of people still do that. It's a very, very well-known technique of, I mean, but I didn't want to be that person. And um, I wanted to know that if I was playing you a song or if I was playing you something that I created, if you was to ever question any part of that song, I'd be able to truthfully tell you that that's either something that I've experienced or that somebody else has experienced. And I never wanted to have to um, excite my lyrics or make them more than what they are for the sake of hoping that somebody would listen to that and be like, oh, wow, he's into this. So now I'm going to listen to his music because he's told me that he's into this, this and this. So it started off as the truth. And that's what I was known for at the start. And I just thought to myself, well, it's going okay like this. So, so why would I stop? And that's it, bro. It's just more because people know me as me. Um, they don't know me. Uh, a lot of people that even I work with now and some of my friends still don't even know that I rap because when I'm face to face with people, you wouldn't necessarily think that I was a rapper, if that makes sense. And I quite like that. I quite like the fact that um, I'm not really seen as that person. But then when I have to be that person, I can kind of put the switch on and then that's what I like doing. That's my release. But I can still. Yeah, if you, if, if you see what I'm saying, bro, and that's why I just want to be me. I don't want to ever have to hide behind my lyrics yeah yeah um totally understand that and totally relatable as well and like i say um your subject matter has always been inspiring with the conversation like talking about the bbc bbc free stuff and whatnot it, it is mental health something that you've had to deal with uh, you know 100 percent. still dealing with mate still dealing with now i'm not ashamed to admit it bro we can both sit in this conversation like men and say there's nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to stuff like that but me even having this conversation with you now is something that will help me because i'm releasing with you even if it's for 20 minutes do you know what i mean people should just be doing this more phoning up people and just talking about it but then again that's a completely different factor but to answer your question mate yeah for the majority of the time i've been making music i've been dealing with something haven't always known what it was and then discovered what it was and now dealing with it so it's just stages you just deal with it in stages sick sick yeah no i like i say i appreciate that and appreciate you opening up like that as well you know and sharing, sharing that with with me and with whoever watches this as well because it's, yeah, def it's definitely something yeah. that we uh, need to talk about a little bit more um back on to lighter subjects um yeah. like i say you've appeared on plenty of platforms you've appeared on jdz jdz media you've played, appeared on um uh fire in the street and whatnot yeah. What, what what's the approach to that what is what's the approach to that and how is it different to um writing a song and recording a song is, is there any sense of going on these platforms and having to step your game up in any way uh be yeah. a lot more competitive and you know really yeah. show off or, or, or is that, is it, yeah <laughs> it's like a showcase like the way i see freestyle sessions is like you can go on a freestyle and you can do something um, meaningful and that, like that's that's wicked i got a lot of time for that but for me i just i see it as um i suppose like a training session like a training session and and then an album tracks like a saturday saturday football match you know what i mean like yeah. not so like it's not that i don't care about the freestyles like but i'm training i'm training for the content for the songs you know what I mean, I'm keeping it in check, but like I'm visualizing my training and then I'm putting it out for the world to see type of thing. It's like, it, I suppose in a way that makes a lot of sense to me, but you might be listening to me like he's, he's no, just chatting. No, I, 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 it's sharpening the knife. It's sharpening the knife. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Thousand I percent. Don't, I don't get how you can say it's sharpening the knife and then go on also grimy TV and just put, uh, do what you did. I literally <laughs> had it on earlier on with um, like the kids were you watching as well. Oh, kids amazing. just sat there like, looking like, oh my God. Like, because that session, again, like obviously yeah. uh, all the appearances on also grimy have been brilliant so far and how he does uh, an amazing job with oh, the agreed. side of things as well. And I always love that, asp that aspect of uh, the visuals and the wordplay coming together um, and really putting uh, an editor to the test as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With yeah, the wordplay yeah. side of things. Um, yeah. So, yeah, for you to turn around and say um, uh, that's training, essentially, makes me 
Like, yeah, like, no. Jesus Christ, what's an album going to be? Like? You know what? As I, as I said it to you, I was thinking, now nah, people are going to take this as oh, I'm not trying in, in the freestyle. That's not the case whatsoever. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest in these freestyles. But it's not that I'm not bothered about it as much as just more of a display of skill. Whereas when I'm in the studio, I'm focusing a lot on, right, so when someone listens to this back, are they going to connect to what I'm saying? And there's a lot more that goes into recording music than for me, goes into recording a freestyle. I put a lot of time into the freestyles, but I'm not necessarily sticking to a brief. It's just like, right, that's saying sick. Let's do that. And it's also because that also oh grimy series, bro. They, every ball person that was on there before me, bro, smashed it out of the park, mate. So the level was so high going into that. You just had to come. You just had to come. Do you know what I mean? Top tier, top tier. Otherwise, I feel like there was no point. I had to give it my all. I had to. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I I, I'm, I absolutely get like where you're coming from as well. Because uh, when you are making a project and what you want the artistry to be displayed there, you know, you're thinking of a lot more than just. You, you don't want to hear an album of freestyles essentially. Um, no, no. Although I would like to like because. Uh, like I'm a big battle rap fan and it's sort of okay. ruined my life when it comes to like looking for the punchlines and stuff through music and what have you. But, okay. um, but like definitely appreciate the other side of things as well, you know. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely get where you're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. What's 2020? Well, obviously 2020 was a bit of a shit show. Um, but yeah, <laughs> in regards to the Welsh hip hop and grime scene, uh, we yeah. made massive strides in getting a bit more spotlight on the country and what the country is actually doing uh, when it comes to hip hop and grime. Um, yeah. uh, what do you think of the Welsh uh, hip hop and grime scene at the moment? Thriving, thriving, mate. More than I've more than I've seen it in a in a very long time. And it's, it's pulling people out of the woodwork, myself included, mate. It's, it's the activity of everybody else that's kind of making everybody hungry and making people think, right, like, let's get back to this, like, I mean, and that's what I mean. Like, it's because of the way the scene is over the last year or two that that's probably impacted as to why I've wanted to come back and make music again, bro. Because it's like, if you can play your part, then you need to be playing your part. You know what I mean? Like, we need to do this as a unity and as a scene. So the more of us that can kind of involve... The musical talent and show what whales have i think the more opportunities that all of us will have to be getting seen do you know what i mean so more people active just means the quicker hopefully that some of us get some limelight do you know what i mean yeah we definitely get the um the woodwork side of things because it seems like everyone is pulling their finger out of the moment and going yeah. oh actually it might actually be possible yeah. we pondered what it is going to take um for an artist to maybe break that boundary? Is there mm -hmm. anything in particular that you think uh, will cause someone to blow up um, I, 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 and really smash that boundary and then open the floodgates for others to do so as well? Oh, but the best way of summing up that, com that question, bro, is just anybody that's questioning it, just look at Mason, look at local, man. Like, for me, in the scene now, and for what we're doing, there's other names, don't get me wrong, there's other names, but for me, they're themselves... They've both got a niche. They're both insanely talented spitters. They've got a wicked local support and kind of UK-based fan base. If anybody's questioning it, man, I, I, I feel like those two are not far off, in my opinion. That's so, like, we're on our way. I look at people like Anne, I think, yeah, man, like... They're people I've known from back in the day and they're succeeding, man. It's so good to see. And if that's not inspiring for other Welsh artists to think, yeah, man, look at these guys running for it, then what, what is it going to take for people to kind of be like, boom? Because everyone's always saying no one from Wales is ever going to blow, no one from Wales, or they have been saying and for the last couple of years. And now people are starting to see the movements that certain MCs are making. And they're like, oh, no, it's going to be Wales this time soon. It's going to be Wales this time soon. But no one's ever been saying that. It's always been, nah, no one's ever going to make it. No one's. But now people are starting to think, hmm, OK, let's have a little look about what's going on in Wales. So it's only a matter of time, mate, I think, before there's more light shown on our music scene, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think you can have a show like Local had at uh, Club I. Oh, uh, me. Uh, like, we, we weren't there, we, but we like so, scroll through all the videos and whatnot, and it looked mental. Like, yeah. it looked ridiculous. And then, obviously, like I say, Mace the Great just won the Triscoll Award made banger after banger last year um, and, yeah. and is really, really at the forefront of what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, Next level. Yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. And we, we gen genuinely hope that, it, you know, 
given the next year or two that someone is going to break through that. Um, with so. that said, what have you got planned for 2021? It's album time. Album time, me ASAP. As soon as I can get it polished and finished, it's coming, mate. It's coming, honestly. I've been working with Jamie a little bit in the studio. Well, I say a little bit, as much as I can during these times because studio situations and stuff are very weird at the moment. You can't necessarily record as much as you'd like. But I'm making do and I'm getting in when I can. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's going to be done before the end of March. That's my aim. I'd like to have the project finished by the end of March. And then possibly, possibly... Um, to follow suit like before a second project to then follow maybe a few weeks later as long as all goes to plan with the features and stuff that I've got in mind um, for that CD because my plan is to drop a project this solo stuff so that you just get that side of you get from Escape the Comfort Zone and a few of the other projects that I've dropped and then I want to drop um, a features CD which is just a collection of me featuring an artist and then another track with another artist of just people that I've been meaning to work with for a while or are in the pipeline of already working with um, just projects, mate. I feel like that two year gap eats me away because in those two years I could have had so much out and had so much sitting there on Spotify. Now I think I've got five or six songs on Spotify, but like you said, if you was to look at the catalog that I could put on there, yeah. it's just more of, I want to come now with the music that's me I don't want to put all that back on Spotify because then people are going to be listening to that also thinking that that's current Eaton I want to make sure everything that I bring moving forward is the kind of new way of me thinking and the way I see it yeah that's sick uh, we'll definitely definitely be looking forward to those releases um, two projects in a short space of time because uh, like I'm a fiend for the projects you know I, I much uh, yeah. prefer a fully fledged project over like a, uh, you know I like the singles and the tracks coming out here yeah, and there but I, I, I do definitely fiend for the projects more than anything um, mm -hmm. some quick fire questions that we've got cool. for you before we uh, run things up let's go. Uh, let's go who's the greatest of all time in Egan's opinion what Okay, wait there. Before these quick fire questions start, let me just, I know they're quick fire questions, but are we classing this now on just the Welsh scene or are we classing this as me, as musicians in general? We've got some Wales based questions. So, um, okay, so that one wasn't. No, no. That one was just in general. That was just in general, yeah? Okay. Uh, oh, these are hard, mate, because you know you're going to get people like, nah. For me, it's J. Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Best album. Oh dear me, Forest Hills Drive, J. Cole. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah. favorite track out of Wales. Oh, out of Wales. Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> probably, probably chat, probably chat local and JK. Probably it's the tough, bro, because you're only obviously the big ones, the ones that did high, high numbers that got a ping in straight to my head. But I know there's a lot of tunes that didn't get the light that I know that I listen to bro and that's going to kill me next I'm going to come off this I'm going to be like ah I should have said mm. but yeah um, we'll go with chat final one artist you'd like to work with in Wales ooh that you in might Wales. not already have on said project that you'll be releasing soon okay uh, yeah look okay uh I'd love to do a track with Mace I would like to work with Mace um just because I think it would be a big tune, but I also would like to work with um, a couple of the youngers, a couple of the youngers, man. Um, there's a few spitters from my way. You got, obviously you've got vision, you know about vision. Um, who doesn't know about vision at the moment? Yeah, Big up my brother vision. Yeah. Um, young Tay and truth, man. Check them out. Obviously I've no young Tay's on the radar. He's sick too, but there's also a spitter named truth. And, um, He's close with Vision and he's close with T. And uh, he's a beast, mate. He's an animal. Look out. Look out. But right. apart from that, yeah, um, I think that's it, man. I think Mace, Mace, I'd love to do a tune with Mace. And then, yeah, I'd love to try and get some of the next generation on tunes and get them spinning some beats. Do you know what I mean? I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. Okay, then, with that in mind, one final question. Okay, what cool. What would be your advice to the younger generation? Mm. <laughs> just cliche just cliche stuff just stay true stay true to yourself do 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 what you feel is is um true to you and 
yeah, I think that's all I can say, bro. I'm not, I feel like sometimes it's tough because I'm not really in a position to give people advice in a sense. I don't feel anyway. I've never have. But if I was going to say something to myself back then, I, I would just say, yeah, just keep it true and just make sure you're your, you're your, your real self. Don't ever hide anything back because hiding stuff back can also create a lot of problems um, in the long run and express, always talk, keep talking. Don't be scared to express. Yeah, we always say that um, our biggest tool is our authenticity. And we, yeah. that, we should use that more than anything else when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so, yeah, 100%. it's 100%. been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Yeah. Um, do you want to like drop it. your socials so, you, so people know where to follow yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. First of all, I just want to say big up yourself, bro. Um, I've been watching what you've been doing over the last months, whatever, mate, you put in a ton of ton of work into what's going on at the moment. And you, you don't get, you don't get, you do get credit, but you don't get enough in my opinion, because I'll give you one example. I was watching your live yesterday um, with the questions, mate, you had a full timetable on your screen of releases of the South Wales. That's dedication, bro proper dedication and i don't think you understand what that means when artists see the work that you're putting in it just gives them faith that people are out there listening so so big up yourself first of all okay. everybody in south wales they're doing this doing their thing at the moment it's inspiring to see everybody hungry everybody working everybody trying to do something and yeah just just keep a lookout for what i got coming um you can follow me on instagram at on street with eat the youtube is exactly the same and yeah i'm gonna give give a Larix entertainment exclusive look out for the album entitled discovery come in the end of march you get the name first nice. discovery nice. end of march <laughs> but pick up yourself bro i really appreciate it man more than you know it means a lot man thanks very much man and uh we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day um to come chat with us um we know it's late and whatnot but yeah we all good we man it, um all good. thanks for coming on Thanks for everyone tuning in. We'll see you once again with another Larynx Line like soon. Peace. Please don't ever try changing who you are. Because who you are is the most important part. You must always try to follow your heart. It's never been everyone else, look, you must start. Because nobody owes you favours, nobody owes you gifts. Nobody owes you chances, nobody owes you lifts You need to put hard work in, you also have to take risks If money is what you're lacking, you need to find a few shifts